Welcome to Sarah Gonzalez Unfiltered. We are still enjoying making America great again. Um, so I we, we just walked on here and I, I literally just read Donald Trump has not made this announcement yet, but the news is coming out that he is expected to make the announcement soon that uh, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. will be tapped to be the secretary of the Health and Human Services Department, um, which is not unexpected. Obviously, we knew that this was coming. This was probably the most talked about uh, position before Donald Trump was elected. So we'll have more on that, I'm sure, tomorrow. Oh, my God. <laughs> like, my dream come true right here with the... A Republican president who is actually um, putting, prioritizing health, actual health in our country is just like, <sighs> again, yesterday I was like, it's getting hot in here. Oh my gosh, I'm, it's getting hot in here again already. So we've got all of these just tremendous uh, appointments that Donald Trump is making, that one included. But we talked yesterday about uh, Matt Gates and Tulsi Gabbard and... Um, just kind of the, the the leftist meltdowns that were happening. And, you know, you expect it, but you do like to just bask in it a little bit, okay? And so after Tulsi Gabbard, who I think in the left's minds, Tulsi Gabbard is a defector. It's not, it's not the left that left Tulsi. It's not the left that went too crazy. It's somehow Tulsi who was the defector and somehow betrayed them and left them. And so they, they must never forget that some sort of a betrayal. And so you hear Joe Scarborough and Mika Brzezinski over there on MSNBC, which their days are numbered. According to the news, their days are numbered. But uh, they're talking about, you know, uh, Tulsi being nominated as director of national intelligence. They're saying, oh my God, it's a risk. It's a risk to national security. Watch. People in the intel community saying, our allies just aren't going to share <laughs> intelligence with us if she's in there because... The sympathetic view, the, the kindest view, is that she is um, a sympathizer of Vladimir Putin's, of Assad's in Syria. I think Tom Nichols and others might take it a step further in who she is and what she's been doing over the last several years. Let's bring in the staff writer for The Atlantic, Tom Nichols. His latest piece titled, Tulsi Gabbard's Nomination is a National Security Risk. Tom, good morning. Can you explain specifically why you believe she would be, if she gets this job, a risk to the country? You know, every federal employee every year has to sit through um, insider threat training uh, to recognize people they think might be um, hazards or unclassified material. And oh, part of that is you know, mm -hmm. people who are deeply critical of the United States okay. and, its, and its foreign policy yeah, who seem to have a lot of affinity um, and mm -hmm. meetings with mm -hmm. um, uh, foreign nationals. I mean, there's all kinds of alarm bells that go off here. Oh, no. Um, and this nomination um sets sets them all off this is you know not somebody that you would say sure this you know i'll hand um the crown jewels of american intelligence to someone who yes. as you pointed out well, uh, leave uh, aside that she's completely unqualified for the job um this is somebody who has consistently taken the side of people like bashar Assad and vladimir putin oh there it is. There it is. There it is. Russia, Russia, Russia. There it was. Because remember, anyone who doesn't want us in forever wars is a Putin puppet, I guess. Now, this Vladimir Putin Russian asset type, uh, you know, of insult against Tulsi, this goes back a while. OK, because if you recall, back in October of 2019, Hillary Clinton was actually the one to first initiate this particular smear campaign against Tulsi. Here is what she said. The bizarre Hillary Clinton attack, uh, Betsy, on on um, Tulsi Gabbard. First, I want folks to hear it. I think they've got their eye on somebody who's currently in the Democratic <laughs> primary and are grooming her to be the third party candidate. She's a favorite of the Russians and that's assuming Jill Stein will give it up, which she might not, because she's also a Russian uh, uh -oh. asset. Uh-oh. Also a Russian asset. Tulsi Gabbard responded, Betsy, you, the queen of warmongers, embodiment of corruption, personification of the rot that has sickened the Democratic Party for so long, it's now clear that this primary is between you and me. Don't cowardly hide behind your proxies. Join the race directly. 
Isn't it so funny when you go back and realize, wow, they've been using this Russian asset, uh, you know, claim for a very long time against anyone who they don't like. It was Tulsi. It was you heard Hillary Clinton. It was Jill Stein. Everyone who doesn't agree with me is a Russian asset or a Nazi, apparently, according to the Democrat Party. But let's talk about who Tulsi Gabbard actually is. OK, uh, back in 2002. 21 years old, elected to the Hawaii State House of Representatives. 2003, she joined the Hawaii Army National Guard. 2004, she deployed to Iraq with a medical unit. 2008, she deployed to Kuwait. 2013, she uh, was a representative for Hawaii's second congressional district, 2013 to, to 16. She was vice chair of the Democrat National Committee. Now, remember that one. Because we're going to circle back. We're going to do a little Jen Psaki uh, follow, follow up. Circle back. OK, um, so 2020, she was the first female combat veteran to run for United States president, 2021, elected to the U.S. House of Representatives. And so I just let's remember who Tulsi Gabbard really is back in 2020 when she did run for president, which is when all of these vicious lies and rumors took place. I mean, Tulsi, I believe she sued over this particular uh, language, but she just like just pummeled. I mean, if words were like a punch. She just punched Kamala Harris in the face, just totally ruined all of her aspirations that she may have had thinking that there was a chance that she would become president in 2020. Watch. I want to bring the conversation back to the broken criminal justice system that is disproportionately negatively impacting black and brown people all across this country today. Now, Senator Harris says she's proud of her record as a prosecutor and that she'll be a prosecutor president, but I'm deeply concerned about this record. There are too many examples to cite, but she put over 1,500 people in jail for marijuana violations and then laughed about it when she was asked if she ever smoked marijuana. She blocked evidence. She blocked evidence that would have freed an innocent man from death row until the courts forced her to do so. She kept people in prison beyond their sentences to use them as cheap labor for the state of California. And she fought to keep cash you, bail system in place that impacts poor people in the worst kind of way. Thank you, Congresswoman. Uh, Senator Harris. I just, I would like for you guys to let me know in the comments, is it normal that I still get so much pleasure out of watching people just totally destroy Kamala Harris? Like, I, I, I just feel like she's already, it's, she, stop it, she's already dead. But I just, I keep... It brings a smile to my face. I, I can't help it. I will go back and rewatch these clips probably until the day that I die. Is that weird? Is that normal? I don't know. I'm not proud of it. It's just the way I feel. And so how did the left arrive at the conclusion that Tulsi Gabbard is a Russian asset? So let's go back. I said we were going to circle back, okay, to the fact that she was vice chair of the Democrat National Committee in 2016. Hillary Clinton was then in this primary with Bernie Sanders for the Demo Do you guys remember this? Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders for the Democrat presidential nomination. And as chair, Tulsi had to be neutral, right? Uh, the, the chair needed to be neutral during the primaries. But what Tulsi did was she resigned from that seat to endorse Bernie Sanders against Hillary Clinton. Now, why would you ask? I mean, to me, it's completely obvious because Hillary Clinton is an evil bitch. But I want Tulsi to explain in her own words how she felt about Hillary Clinton. Watch. I saw the, the cost of war firsthand during my first deployment, which was to Iraq. I worked in a medical unit. But for all of my brothers and sisters and for the American people, to point out the differences between Bernie Sanders and Hillary Clinton on this issue of war and peace, on which candidate I feel would take us down a path towards peace, uh, as opposed to uh, Hillary Clinton, who has shown through her record and her current positions that she will continue us uh, to take us down this road of interventionist regime change wars that have cost us far too much. And there it is. There it is. It, what did I say at the beginning? If you don't like forever wars, you're a Russian asset. That's what they're going to call you. Because if you don't like forever wars, if you don't want people in charge who are pushing for forever wars, then you must be a Russian asset. You must be against Ukraine. You must want people to die. That, of course, is their rationale. And I just, I just want to point out for a moment, she was so vocal, Tulsi was so vocal against Hillary Clinton 
that the mainstream media was like, is she, is she okay? Like, is she going to be okay? Watch. What about any retaliation? The Clintons have had a well-oiled machine in Washington for years. Do you fear any retribution from the Clintons? Retribution What's like your what? Been what do you like mean by that? that? Well, you know, I was I was heavily warned by uh, people who care about me to uh -huh. to not endorse Senator Sanders because of that fear of They're retaliation. Like, and, well, it's just and look, that, that fear is is something that a lot um, of people who end up uh, exists in, in a lot of folks that I've heard from. Uh, there is far too much at stake here to stand on the sideline and let politics get in the way of what's real. And what's real is war and the cost of war. I've seen and felt that cost firsthand uh, through my service and my deployments to the Middle East. And I cannot stand on the sidelines and do nothing. When we have a clear choice that many people are not informed about, there are very stark differences between Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders. And I'm gonna do everything I can to make sure that people know what those differences are so they can at least make an educated and informed decision. There it is. There it is. That's all. That, that's all there is to it. Okay. And now she's going to be in charge of these intelligence agencies that were weaponized not only against her, but against so many Americans. So she doesn't want forever wars. She is a Russian asset. Insert here. NBC News, of course, entering the conversation. Tulsi accused of traitorous Russian propaganda. Oh my goodness gracious. Trump's pick for top intel job has been accused of traitorous parroting of Russian propaganda. Washington, Washington Examiner said, Senate GOP must stop Tulsi Gabbard from getting keys to the intelligence castle. Oh my goodness gracious. Now, it always comes back to Donald Trump. Right. Even the what I would say, Washington, Washington Examiner is not exactly like leftist uh, media. And they said uh, Trump is Trump first, not America first. Trump has made some strong selections for top national security roles in his new administration. However, in the case of Tulsi Gabbard, Trump put his desire for loyalty before the interests of the nation. Senate Republicans should join Senate Democrats in preventing his mistake from taking effect. Now. It's just, it's really insane when you think about, because when you think about today, today's Republican and Democrat party, today, it's the Democrat party who seems to be the party of forever wars. But we forget when we talk about that, that it's actually both parties when it comes down to it. There are a whole lot of Republicans who are totally fine sending all of your taxpayer money and your children, by the way, to Ukraine or wherever else they want to be involved in. And that's the fact of the matter. Now, when we come back, I want to get into, uh, you know, speaking of all of the, oh my God, national security. Let's, uh, let's hear from John Bolton, Trump's former national security advisor. And then you may understand, if you don't already, why loyalty is so important to someone like Donald Trump. First, we want to thank our sponsor, this segment, Birch Gold. So, Birch Gold is there for those of you. Look, it's been really crazy. It's been really chaotic with Joe Biden uh, running the show. Actually, he's not running the show. We all know that. But the point being, um, you know, I, I am my hope is that things will become more stable. It is going to take some time. But the fact of the matter is, regardless of whether or not there's global chaos or even in times of strength and prosperity, gold is a great way to diversify your savings. So uh, if you've got an old IRA or a 401k just lying around collecting dust and p potentially devaluing by the day, go talk to my friends over at Birch Gold. They can set you up. They can uh, actually convert it into an IRA or 401k in gold. It's not going to cost you a penny out of pocket. All I'm telling you to do, okay, I'm not a financial expert, so they are. So I want them to send you the information and you can figure out if it's right for you. Just text the word Sarah to 989898. That, that's going to trigger them to send you a free information kit on gold and silver. You can learn more about it. And then if you do think it's right for you, go talk to them. They've helped my family. They can help you guys. Text the word Sarah to 989898. <laughs> All right, I want to welcome to the panel, full table today, very excited about it. We've got Matthew Mosden, a Belize TV contributor and actor and producer extraordinaire, uh, along with Justin Haskins. He actually told me 
that he was here this time, senior fellow at the Heartland Institute. I was bullied. <laughs> I'm here against my will. Listen, here at Sarah Gonzalez Unfiltered, we do believe in bullying. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> like blink twice. That's blink twice. <laughs> yeah. you need help. Uh, and also along for the ride, we have Candace Michelle. She is an emotional alignment specialist and former WWE star. Yes. In the most epic Trump shirt ever. Really so cool. yeah, no. Well, <laughs> welcome to the show. Thank you. I I hear you have your own uh, evolution story of. Maybe similar to uh, Tulsi Gabbard, who I just talked about, leaving yeah. the left. Actually, I didn't leave the left. The left left me. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know that I was actually in the left. You know, I was just, uh, you know, all WWE superstars somehow are sent to the National Democratic Convention. Mm. I mean, I look like the perfect fit for that, right? I was like, yeah, I totally know politics at like 22 years old. Great. And uh, just really kind of realized what has happened in our country lately. Yeah. So time to take a stand. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. I love it. I'm glad you're here. Um, you. Also, my goodness, look at that rock on her finger. It's beautiful. Yes. Wow. It's been 25 years. He's done a good job. Oh, my oh, goodness wow. gracious. Congratulations. Uh, okay. Um, that's my excuse. Twenty At year 25, I'm <laughs> Like Steven. <laughs> Steven's not here right now, oddly. He's like, I, I saw that ring and I'm straight out of here. I know what she's going to do. <laughs> so, so, oh, by the way, uh, it always happens this way. I just said before um, the break, I mentioned that it sounded like there were reports that Donald Trump was going to announce RFK Jr. He did announce it. And there was like this epic speech that RFK gave, which I will be sure to bring you tomorrow because you guys know that is like my lane and I'm I'm very excited to talk about it, um, but it's just all happening literally right now. So we'll talk about that tomorrow. But I want to get back to um, this this conversation that I was having really with myself. So I'm glad you guys are here. <laughs> um, it happens all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. More often than I'd like to admit, yes, um, about this, this leftist reaction to these unconventional picks, these unconventional, uh, you know, appointments by Donald Trump. And I want to play for you guys John Bolton talking about... Tulsi Gabbard, Matt Gates, and oh my God, the world's gonna end. Watch. Oh, I, I thought it was the worst cabinet level appointment in history uh, until they then heard about the Matt Gates appointment. Uh, really, uh, my reaction was that this is like the legend of Caligula, the Roman emperor, uh, who wanted to nominate his horse as a Roman consul. Uh, you had to be a Roman senator at the time to be These a consul, so and it was intended to show how demeaned and degraded the Roman Senate had become. So now we're going to see <laughs> whether the American <sighs> Senate can stand up and reject two people who are totally unqualified, mm. uh, unfit uh, professionally, and, uh, and, and really lacking talking? in, the, in the, the moral characteristics, the character that you need to hold these jobs. That I think this stunning. vote should be 100 to nothing against both of them. I'm sorry. I tuned out to what the last part of what that old man was saying. But the point <laughs> that I was making before we came on was there is a reason that loyalty matters to Donald Trump. You look at this man. I mean, he was. He served under Donald Trump. He is in a long line of people. Millie. I mean, I, I could go on listing all of these people who served under Donald Trump. And at the end, Turned out they backstabbed him, right? Mm -hmm. And I know that they, they, they thought they knew better. There were anonymous op-eds written in the New York Times about how, oh, well, we knew be we know better. Donald Trump, he's so dumb. And the, the fact of the matter is you serve at the pleasure of the president. Right. He is actually he is the commander in chief and he is putting you in these positions and you are to put forward what he decides. And if you can't do that, you're not the right guy for the job. But so I think that he learned that this time around and or well. Last time, what's happened to him with all of the, you know, the raid at Mar-a-Lago, all of the indictments, uh, the the felony charges that he ended up, of course, they convicted him of. And so you've got this long list of things that have happened to Donald Trump that gives him the perspective to go, you know what? Screw your conventional picks. I'm going to nominate who I want, who I know will carry out my vision, my America first vision that got me elected uh, by the majority of the country because hello, we won the popular vote this time around. So it's just like you watch these yahoos go on msnbc and cnn and spout all of this nonsense and you're like you're the reason why he picked a tulsi you. you're the reason why he picked a matt gates 
Like, you're literally the reason why. I want to play one more for you guys, and then I want to get your thoughts on all of this. Because um, it's just, I just love, I'm a gloater. I'm not going to lie. I'm a gloater. I, I still have my Trump signs in my yard. I don't know when I'm taking those down. <laughs> I might not, maybe not for four years. I don't really know. I know my name. Well, we had two people who had Harris wall signs in their yards. And I just, I, I just really, they walk their dogs. And I just always look on my cameras and I'm like, I love that you have to walk past my house with my Trump signs still <laughs> up. Um, so here's, uh, let's play Senator Chris Murphy uh, talking about Trump's appointment of Matt Gates And oh my God, it's cataclysmic for American democracy. Watch. The Senate Foreign Relations Committee. Um, Senator, uh, the breaking news, the pick of Congressman Matt Gates to be the next U.S. Attorney General, your reaction? Well, I was walking off the Senate floor just moments ago when the news was announced. Uh, you could literally hear the jaws dropping to the floor of Would Republican you? senators <laughs> who are now going to be in a position Lots of broken to bones. stand up to <laughs> Donald Trump in a way that they have been unwilling to. I mean, mm. listen, Matt Gates is dangerously unqualified, but that's not the worst of it. Uh, Gates has been Trump's chief defender when it comes to Trump's assault on democracy, his attempt to overthrow the government on January 6th, and he has oh, openly okay. called for the abolition okay. of law enforcement agencies if they don't get in line with conservative mm. political priorities. Mm. This is going to be a red alert moment for oh, no. American democracy. Matt Gates is being nominated for one reason and one reason only, because he will implement Donald Trump's transition of the Department of Justice from an agency that stands up for all of us. <laughs> yes! To an really? Yes! That is simply one of the White House designed oh! to persecute and prosecute Trump's political enemies. Maybe the yes, most important literally, yes. nomination at at this that. moment is that the is nomination like a for Attorney right General. There. <laughs> right? The entire credibility of government so rests delusional. upon the belief. <laughs> no. I know. I don't. I'm, I'm tired of listening to, to him. I don't want to. I don't want to hear this guy. From so him. awesome. They think it's bad, and we're all like, "This is the greatest he's thing." He's gonna ever. do what Trump so wants. Awesome. Oh my yes. gosh! <laughs> do you mean he's not gonna backstab Trump? No. Oh no! Oh no! We're all like, yes. And we're like, you guys are the only ones who don't get it. <laughs> yes, that's why we elected him again. That's the point. That's the point, bro. <laughs> So great. Please. It's amazing. Yeah. I mean, it's just absolutely amazing. The thing that I love about this is if you take a look at the cabinet level positions, um, you have Marco Rubio uh, for Secretary of State. I'm the least excited about that. Sure, of course. Yeah. Obviously. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then you also have, you also have, um, like that was, that's a given. Yeah. I mean, I know, I know that about you, sir. Uh, <laughs> they, they, he also has uh, John Ratcliffe at CIA. He has some picks that are very conventional picks that almost any Republican would choose. Right. Okay. But then he's got these people like Tulsi Gabbard and like Matt Gates and who are making liberals cry. And the reason <laughs> for those picks, the thing that is, is so, so the reason these people are losing their minds is because these are not people who are going to manage the department of justice or yeah. Tulsi Gabbard, who doesn't trust the intelligence community has right. been a target of it. She's not there to manage it. We know yeah. she's the, there. They were put there to, to have a flamethrower and just burn half the thing down. That's why they're, there and these are the problem areas for mm -hmm. trump it was the national intelligence community that was turning on him and spying on him and all of that right the doj the lawfare the is it it's a shock the doj tried to put him in prison right and now they whoa we put the wrong guy in charge of he's gonna do what trump wants it's like no let's put another guy in charge of doj that's gonna try to put trump in prison is that what we're supposed to do so it's just perfect yeah it's just so perfect I know. and i, know. I I just couldn't be happier, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> it's like the greatest two weeks ever. Dude, I'm like still, I'm still on a high every I day. I'm just like, I don't know when this is gonna wear off, but like I am I am I'm not tired of winning. Sarah. No, I'm not, not gonna tired get tired of, of the winning. winning. <laughs> Candace. This has been the greatest wrestling match that I've ever seen. <laughs> Literally, we were in the heat getting beat down for four years in that administration. And to be in the comeback, literally every day the team that gets added to the cabinet, wow. I'm like, I feel safer. My nervous system calms down. I feel good for my children living yep. in this world. My nephew's getting deployed in June. I'm like, yes, wow. like we deserve this comeback. Yeah. And I, I don't ever want it to end. Well, and that's why I, 
listen, I don't want to say I was like depressed for a while, but I was very, I had my, my, my mom texting me, they watched the show and my mom's like, you seemed angry. And I'm like, I'm not angry. I'm just passionate about saving yeah. this country for my kids, right? Because yeah. you mentioned the kids. That's what it's all about for me. Yeah. I, I understand uh, living a hedonistic lifestyle if you're, you know, one of the childless cat ladies, but I'm not. I've got skin in the game. And I'm like, oh, I, I have to work hard. I have to get the message out in order to save this country for my children. That's all that I care about at this point. So, um, well, Matt, you'll love this. Let me bring this up for you. Mm -hmm. Eva Longoria reveals she moved her family out of the dystopian United States. Yes. Oh At least she is now walking the walk because there were a lot of them who said they were, oh, we're going to leave if Donald Trump gets elected. And now she's, she has said they've moved. Yeah, this dystopian country that or made her a multi multi millionaire and gave dystopian. her everything. Dystopian. Dystopian. Yeah. No, I mean, look, I mean, they're, they're all pathetic. They're really pathetic. And, and look, I'm all for it. Let them all go. Let them all go, and then there are millions that want to come here legally. Right. Let me just say, can we do it legally? Right. It's not no. a problem. You, you know, I mean, like, so you guys. This isn't a this to... isn't a southern accent. No, no, no. Yeah. And my son actually. So it's interesting. So my son, who I, who can come here, is a, a, a adult child of a naturalized citizen. First. And people who watch your show know this. It went four years to review his case. Wow. Then it went nine years to review his case. Now it's like, we don't know. Wow. Right? We don't know. But I, I do have to say, I, I have you seen like the, the Avengers? Gone. It's like Thanos snapped them. You haven't heard a thing from them. You haven't heard a thing from Hollywood because they've been absolutely rejected. And here's the thing about John Bolton. Or right, John Bolton and all these other career politicians, right? He hasn't met a war that he didn't want to get involved in, nope. right? But all of these guys, they are narcissists. Mm -hmm. And what you're seeing is their inability to, to truly comprehend that they were wrong. Mm -hmm. Because narcissists, they can't take it, yeah. right? And so you see him like going, I've, I've got to point the finger. I've got it. Somebody else, it's somebody else's fault. Well, the whole country has rejected them. Yeah. Before they could say, well, you know, we won the popular vote, so really we're right. Now they've been absolutely rejected and the orange man is in. Like, and they can't understand how people can love Trump. <laughs> yeah. And they don't understand, like you said, how we can actually go and bring people in yeah. that will do what he yes. wants. I mean, this is this crazy. Think about that. Imagine going into your job at Walmart <laughs> and them going, go and stack the shelves. And they're like... I don't know why you're asking me to stack these shelves. I figured I'd go over there and I'd run the company. I'd be like, what? This is what these people are doing. Yeah. And they've got away with it. No more mother... I didn't say... Yeah. I wouldn't okay. have cared if you did. Last time I was here, she looking at like 20 f It's <laughs> over so for you. You can go all the way on this show. No, it's no. over. Yeah. yeah. Daddy's home. Yeah. I, I have a question. Yeah, where, did, where did she move her family? To which non-dystopian place? Yeah, you know? that's actually a, a great... Does it say in the headline? I can't see the it didn't small... didn't say in the headline. The small, let's see. I okay, mean, I'm I gotta know up. now, because she left dystopian um, America. She's splitting her time between Mexico and Spain. Oh. Because Mexico is not dystopian. No. From <laughs> <laughs> is it? Let's hope that she doesn't get found. No, I can't say that. But, I mean, they're, they're literally in Mexico finding people decapitated underneath flyovers. Yeah. Right. Totally also, fine. There's also a lot of Mexicans trying to come here the last yes. night. She, <laughs> she might want to ask some of her new neighbors what they think about America. It was just unbelievable. This I is know. why we have to know. We got to know. Uh, yeah, no, you're That's right. Great. Okay, so one more for you guys. Um, you know, have you heard that the latest that uh, liberals are, liberal women are threatening sex strikes? I have. Okay. Oh, that's fantastic. I've heard about it. Um, I'd like, I'm really sorry to do this to you guys. No, you're I'd not like to show us. I am going to show you oh one prominent God. liberal who you're supposed to be really upset that she may go on a sex strike. Watch. We all came. I dare. Yeah, you you didn't oh, no. get here by yourself, man. You can't do this without us. Yeah. And if we don't let you, you don't get any. It's that simple. It's that simple. I think the last That's time that she had sex with a man was probably like 1976. <laughs> <laughs> and also the men are like, we're fine with that. Yeah, like, yeah totally. It's right. like, you listen, all right, I we okay. Uh, that's fine. I would rather just live in peace than have sex with Whoopi Goldberg. <laughs> <laughs> so
Sorry. All right, sorry. It's just a, it's just a, a, involuntary. <laughs> Again, it's just like sorry. the detachment from reality. Yeah. It just never seems. It just it, it, it's just it's just incredible. You've got elderly women threatening to withhold sex from men that don't want to have sex with them. <laughs> You've got people screaming their heads off. You've got uh, Eva Longoria moving to non-dystopian Mexican <laughs> hell. Like, this is just, like, the most unbelievable thing. you got John Bolton crying through his mustache about the, about what? That, he appoint, that Trump's appointing people who actually say they're going to do what Trump wants. They are so incredibly delusional. And you would think that they would stop and some of them have some some have stopped and said okay like clearly we're not getting something right. you know right. but a lot of them still haven't yeah. and it's just you would think the others would at least say just shut up right. shut right. up you right. are ruining this <laughs> Even All worse. <laughs> like, just why is John Bolton here? Nobody likes him anyway. <laughs> this is unbelievable. And I will say this because I, I grew up, my formative years were at the height of the anti George W. Bush period, where everyone associated with George W. Bush, the worst person who ever mm -hmm, lived. Mm -hmm. And now all these people are liberals. Yep. They're all voting with Kamala Harris, yep. like uh, Dick Cheney yep. is pro Harris, yep. uh, John Bolton is pro Harris. Like, what is going on? How did they hated these people? Now they're all in bed together. It tells you a lot mm -hmm. about that era of time. Amen. And thank God it is over because that was the worst. Though it is, I know the Democrats are terrible. I can't stand terrible Republicans yeah, like that. Worse. No, it just go away. Yeah. I'm glad they're in the Democrat. I hope they go, go there and stay there yeah, forever. Stay there. Yeah. Stay there. Yeah. We don't want you back. Candace, last <laughs> word. Um, I just think like, you know, I don't want those people to procreate. <laughs> like, I just feel like we're the party of common sense. And at some point, if you think we're really going to be upset that you're not going to have sex anymore, right. like, do you think I'm spending my day thinking about if Whoopi's having sex? Oh my God. I mean, please. Like, his, his I'm yeah. happy they're yeah. not going to procreate. And then they're not going to, you know, go over the, this whole abortion thing that they yeah. want to make at the forefront of things. So great. Right. Now you don't have to worry about that law yeah, and you yeah. guys are good. So yeah. just stop having sex. I know. I love that. They're like, oh, well, in response to this, all this abortion stuff, you're not going to let us get an abortion. We're just going to be responsible <laughs> and not have unprotected crazy sex with random people who are like, great, great that sounds yeah. awesome. Yeah. Okay. Like, we should probably do that. Uh, de Democrats are getting dangerously close to abstinence as yeah. their like main policy yeah. is now yeah. abstinence. Like, like, what is going on? This okay. Is, yeah, 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 all right. Sign yeah. me up for that. Okay. I love it. All right. We've got to uh, take another quick break. We'll uh. be back with more, but we want to thank our sponsor, Relief Factor, this segment. So those of you who are living in pain, it doesn't have to be that way. Try Relief Factor. Um, I've used it. It works for me. It's worked for Matt a lot. Yeah, I used it recently as well. On my Need to get you some more. Nerve, yeah. Um, so what they what it does is it targets the inflammation in your body, which is typically the root cause of your pain. So it's not like a mask. You're not going to mask it. It's not a band aid to where you're like, oh, it feels hot and also cold, and then in ten <laughs> minutes you're in pain again. That's not what this is. Okay, so try it. Seventy percent of the people who order their three week quick start go on to keep ordering more. It's working for that many people. It's all natural, by the way. Oh, we love that here at Sarah Gonzalez Unfiltered. Go to relieffactor.com. Get that three-week quick start for $19.95. It is relieffactor.com. Well, as um, Donald Trump has gotten elected, we've seen the left uh, just not just melt down, but really push back on the mass deportation, cracking down on all of the illegal immigrants. I know there have been several states uh, who have come out, their state officials have come out and said, we will not cooperate with any federal agencies coming in here and trying to take our people. And they're all about welcoming in these people. We're a sanctuary city. We welcome these people. We're going to protect them. Oh, except that, you know, you have people like Governor Maura Healey of Massachusetts declaring a state of emergency because the state commission is saying their emergency shelters for these illegals are costing a billion dollars a year. And now, now they're like, uh, federal government, we need, we need money because we can't afford this. Uh, the answer is no. Let's watch uh, Governor Healy. If the Trump administration requests it, would the Massachusetts state police assist in mass deportations? No, absolutely not. But 
You know, let, let me say this. Um, okay. I do think it's important that we all recognize that there's going to be a lot of pressure on states and state officials. And I can assure you, we're going to work really hard to deliver. Um, some some realities also need to be you know um, noted, and that mm. is in 2016, huh. we had a very different situation in the courts. And uh, well, I'm sure there may be litigation ahead. You know, there's a lot of other ways that people are going to, to act and need to act uh, for the sake of their states and, and their residents. There's regulatory authority and executive powers and, and no the idea. like. I'm, down well, like I I, I'm tired of so listening. I'm tired of listening to her. So boring. I'm tired of listening to her. So the point is, um, she is like, no, we're not going to help deport them, but also we need money. Hmm. No. No. And this is what's going to happen. And, uh, you know, we talked about this. Where I don't can't remember if you were with me or not, but the fact that there will be a lot of illegals who when you cut off the funds, you cut off the, the EBT debit cards, you cut off the shelters, you cut off all of the freebie lifestyle. And then you have all of the their, their funds are gone. A lot of them will self-deport. Yep. Yeah. And if they don't self-deport, they're all going to show up in freaking Massachusetts and good luck to you. Yeah. <laughs> Have fun because when you knock on President Trump's door and say, hey, could we get some funds because we can't actually accommodate all of these illegals? The answer is going to be no. And by the way, screw you. That's I, what it'll be. I think what's so, what's so annoying about this, too, is last I checked, the state of Massachusetts has the ability to tax people, too. So if they want money, they could right, just go so to their own cool. citizens yep. and yep. say, hey, you know, yep. sorry, but we got to raise taxes. We have a billion dollars a year. we got to pay for illegal immigrants. Yep. But, also, you guys are the, but, they're the ones who want the sanctuary city. Yeah, exactly. Like so should. if you want this, exactly. then you have to pay for it. Yeah. But yeah. they don't want to do that. No, instead they go to the federal government, which actually doesn't have any money. They're just printing it. And they're demanding that the federal government, and then, then she acts like, well, we got to have the federal, why? Just raise taxes because, because they know the moment they do that. They'll be gone. That's it'll, it. It's over. Yeah, yeah. Because, because as soon as you have to you tell liberal Massachusetts voters, guess what? Sorry, but your tax bill is going through the roof right. because we got to pay the billion dollars a year. Mm -hmm. That's the end. Right. Yeah. So right, instead, exactly. we're just pretending like we don't have the ability to tax anybody. Right. While we simultaneously tax people all the time for everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's unbelievable. And they want to use say my tax money right like our right. tax money not living in massachusetts yeah. to go and fund <laughs> them making stupid decisions yeah. i'm like no thank you well i identify as an immigrant now <laughs> because i mean you are very tan hard you to, pass. i am a little bit <laughs> i mean paying for my grocery bill like I, send me these checks yep. like i'm paying taxes this property tax in texas oh, thing, i know Wow, that really shocks you. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I'm like, we're trying to get that solved next Thank session, you. by the way. Thank yeah. you. Um, but they're coming in and we're paying all this money. And then when we go put them on her front doorstep, she's freaking out. Right. I'm like, wait, lady, right. like we can't even pay our own bills right now. Like, yeah. this is crazy. Yeah, it really is. Yeah, we said it, we, we say it a lot on this show. It's got to be personal to you before you'll act. Yeah. It's like the Martha's mm -hmm. Vineyard. Right, they were like, yes, we welcome everyone. Oh, yeah. oh, no, not here. I, I <laughs> yeah, think we welcome yeah. them, but not here. And it'd be just great, wouldn't it, to have Trump go, uh, Nappy! <laughs> Nappy! Uh. Kiss my feet. <laughs> you gotta go down, you gotta kiss my feet. What do you want? You want money? No, you're fired. You're fired! <laughs> it'd be so great just to say, it's... Wait, I love winning and he hasn't even got in yet. No, yeah, I know. It's so great. We're not tired of the winning, okay? Mm -hmm. I never will be. I want to, just by the way, um, this woman in particular, I love this. Uh, what What is her name? Healy? She, dumbass, I'll call her. Um, <laughs> she was like, she and her lieutenant governor were actually asking citizens to house illegal immigrants because they had run out of space. I think we have a clip of that. Wow. Yep. If you have an extra room or suite in your home, please consider hosting a family. Safe housing and shelter is our most pressing need. Become a sponsor <laughs> so family. Crazy. You can the contact the Brazilian the Workers Center for yeah. more information so on how crazy. you can step up if you're willing to have an additional family be you part first. of your family. You first. In the governor's <laughs> letter first. to That's the enough. federal government you first. on Tuesday. That's enough. Venezuelan gangs, come on That's in. I'm just like, I would yeah. love to know. I hope someone ever asked the lieutenant governor and the governor how many they took in. Yes. Oh, surely they how did. How many did you take in, in in the governor's, I assume there's governor's mansion. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
How many did you take in, ma'am? I would love to know. Um, As you rightfully point out, like there, I mean, there are a lot of them that are unsavory people. Yeah, but it's so funny how they say we've got to do it for safety and for. What about Americans? Like, can we like? Are you going to have people that you don't know around your daughters? In particular, right. these people are—they're out of their minds. <clears throat> yeah. I'm glad. I hope they keep doing this. This is fantastic. This is why they lost. Yeah, in I know. Overwhelming yeah, fashion. Yep. yep. Because of stupid things like this. So it let's could, just keep mm-hmm. the good times rolling. More stupid Healy, dumb, Governor Dumbass, whatever you call her. <laughs> that wasn't me. I'm just Healy, quoting Healy. you. Yeah, I'm just to make Touchy that clear. Feely, but... Healy. <laughs> Touchy feely Healy, so dumb, so stupid. I love it. I love it. No, you're right. You're right. Because then we can, I mean, y'all saw the map. It's just so much beautiful so red in that map. We so could add good. a little bit more, just a little bit more red up there. I wouldn't hate it's it. Amazing. That's all I'm saying. Um, all right. We've got to, uh, we got to take a quick break. And then when we come back, I want to talk about what is happening to Alex Jones. I'm trying to get him on the program tomorrow, but I cannot wait Till tomorrow to talk about what's happening to him. First, we want to thank our sponsor, this segment, Bonhoeffer. So Angel Studios uh, has just come out with a new movie. They're doing great work over there. And it is, of course, about Dietrich Bonhoeffer. Uh, He's... I don't know if you guys know who he is, but he's a very famous uh, figure in history, swept into the epicenter of a deadly plot to assassinate Hitler in this upcoming film. It comes out November 22nd. You can go get Showtimes right now, angel.com slash Sarah. Listen, if you want to help the parallel economy, this is a great way to do it. They're making movies. uh, They're not funded by the woke left, and they never will be. So go check them out. Get your tickets today at angel.com slash Sarah. So last time I talked to Alex Jones, of course, he had um, this auction date coming up where the a bankruptcy court put him in, put Infowars up for auction. And yesterday that auction happened. And um, a lot of sinister stuff is going on in that. So um, I'll get into the details, but Infowars as of right now, Infowars.com is totally down. If you go to the site, it just says site unavailable till further notice. And so what we're finding out now is that it was, in fact, The Onion that purchased Infowars for, they say, an undisclosed amount, and they released this statement. No price would be too high for such a cornucopia of malleable assets and mines. And yet, in a stroke of good fortune, a formidable special interest group has outwitted the hapless owner of Infowars, a forgettable man with an already forgotten name, and forced him to sell it at a steep bargain, less than $1 trillion. And... If that weren't disgusting enough, I just would also like to bring up that you would think this is for the Sandy Hook families, okay? They're saying this is for the Sandy Hook families. We're going to bankrupt this guy. We're going to put him out of business so that he can no longer do this again because it actually isn't about the Sandy Hook families. But they're pretending like it's about the Sandy Hook families and letting them recoup some of this money because they know that Alex Jones, the man, can never pay it back. It's, it's too absurd. That was the point. And so Alex Jones, in his broadcast today, I'm going to play him saying this, um, the judge didn't even go with the highest bidder, which really tells you what they're all about. Watch. And so uh, the feds that were here left. And when they heard Steve Bannon say, you know, go put cameras on them, that's not what I was going to do. I wanted to go talk to him. Uh, I did talk to him over the phone. And they're going to Houston for the emergency hearing that the folks I was working with that put in real bids uh, were just denied the process. They went and paid. They went and got put down deposits. They did everything right. Uh, and then, nope, sorry, lower bid gets it. Uh, and that's all coming out in court. So, and if the judge wants to certify this, and that's what America is so far, we know that we've got to you know, continue to work to restore our republic. But we've won. Trump's in. We're turning the tide. So, of course, if this were about making sure that these families had the funds that they claim that they're entitled to, you'd go with the highest bidder. Mm. But we all know what happened. The highest bidder was, of course, going to hand the keys back over to Alex and allow him to continue doing what he has been so successful in doing, which is telling the truth. And they couldn't have that because the point is suppressing free speech. And now you have uh, Infowars coming to an end. By the way, I would encourage everyone. I'm not like I, I just... Alex is a friend and he does really great work for this country. And so I would encourage everyone to go follow him uh, on his new, maybe temporary network. I don't know, but I believe it's AJN Live 
on social media. So I would encourage you guys to go follow him there. But I mean, the just the disgusting things that are being done to this man for agree with him or not with what he said, it was wrong. He said it was wrong. He apologized. He said it was wrong. He took ownership of it. But the point is, you are allowed to say those things, or at least you were allowed to say whatever the hell you wanted in this country without having your life ruined over it. Yeah, I think the main thing is it's, we know it's not about <clears throat> the Sandy Hook family. It's not. And that's what's, it's just, you know, the, the irony of it, right? The sad irony of them using that as an excuse mm -hmm. to punish him is just despicable mm -hmm. i mean it's just horrible he shouldn't have done what he did we all know that you know like i said he apologized he said he was sorry but like as you said sarah give the company to the highest bidder right if you really care and you want to recoup as much money give it to the highest bidder and get the money to the families right Right. Exactly. It's not about that. Not and about it's so that. transparent. And just imagine, we were saying off air, just imagine what this would have been like if Trump hadn't have won. Yeah. Like what a massive blow yeah. this would have been for free speech, for, mm -hmm. for everyone in entertainment. Mm -hmm. Like it would have been a, a huge blow. But he'll come back. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, it's going to make him stronger and more popular than ever. Yeah, that's probably true. I mean, it's it's incredible to me the, you know, the more you dive into the details of that whole story, the crazier it really is. Um, obviously, he has a free speech right to be wrong. Right, exactly. And, you know, you don't see the Washington Post being exactly. taken away and sold off because they peddle the Russian collusion theory mm -hmm. for years and years and years. That was wrong, right? And think of all the people who got dragged in the mud because of that or the government. Think of all the crazy investigations they've done that are totally wrong and all of, I mean, all of these other parties get away with doing much, much worse than what Alex Jones did in this situation, as bad as it was. And really, the fall, the, the, what, the damage to the families came from other people, actually, not yeah, Alex exactly. Alex Jones wasn't calling up families, yeah. harassing them. Yeah. It was other people. Yep. And instead of going after them and making them pay some sort of penalty, they went after him because he said it and it so-called inspired other people. Mm -hmm. Well, th by that logic, you could do this to anybody. Exactly. And that's the terrifying thing. Exactly right. Right. Candace. I feel like this has just really been a war on good and evil yeah. and not just this situation, but I mean, you can go to Robert F. Kennedy Jr. His career was ostracized, you know, Tulsi, all these people. And so when I look at it now and even my own personal life, just suffering traumas for four years on moving my whole life and my whole family and starting over, but my greatest gifts came from it. So mm. when I see shit like this happening to people, I just hope they keep the faith and they trust that they're going through the shit because they're going to be someplace so much better yeah. and now we're seeing this over and over again with yeah. so many people like you didn't take the covid shot now you just won 20 million dollars and i don't want to i don't want to end <laughs> i don't want why do we have to go i want to keep talking